Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon for all the superstars all around the world. This is Frank Salas, better known as the talented Mr. Salas. And today I have a personal friend and an amazing storyteller coming on our show. We have Cherie, and Cherie is somebody who is going to just share her story. I, I'm going to shut up and just let her introduce herself and just uh, tell her about where, just tell everybody where you, what you've been through, and then we can segue kind of let's, into what you're doing now. But, you know, without yeah. further ado, this is Cherie out in New York City. Hello, 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 everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much, Frank, for having me on. It's such an honor. I'm glad we finally were able to cross our schedules and make this happen. Um, I, I see you so active on social media, so it's really nice to, to finally kind of join forces and be a part of <laughs> your many projects that you're working on. Um, so hello, everybody. My name is Sherry May. I am a, um, I am an entrepreneur online, uh, just like many of you. And um, only I had a crazy, crazy experience in my life. Um, I actually died six years ago. Um, I flatlined in my husband's arms at the height of my success. I was CEO of my own digital tech marketing firm. Uh, on top of the world, had spent 16 years in branding and marketing and advertising, well sought out uh, programmer, female programmer, uh, back in the early days, <laughs> not to age myself, <laughs> but um, I, I've been around this industry for a very, very long time. And um, that was really like my goal. My goal ever since I was much younger was to be an entrepreneur, run my own business, be a, a CEO. Um, you know, that's that's kind of what I had been working for my whole life, just working really, really hard from getting good grades in school, getting into a great college to, um, you know, busting my tail at uh, different um, corporations, advertising firms, you know, just what everybody else has been taught, right, for all these years to do to achieve success, right? Climb that corporate ladder, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you reach a point where you start to make six figures and and I think that for a lot of us that are really meant, we're like born entrepreneurs, it doesn't last very long. And it's like six figures definitely sounds like a lot of money to a lot of people. But when you were born for something bigger, when you were born to, to not feel trapped in like an office or a cubicle or working for somebody else's vision, there's only so much money that can make you happy, right? And that's kind of what happened with me. And so I kind of like got all the skills that I needed while I was working for other companies. Um, so like I said, I started off as a, a self-taught programmer, became one of the top uh, programmers, um, you know, really all over the country. I was well sought after. I moved around a lot to, for different companies. Um, but then, and when, once I got really uh, into more high levels of management in the tech field, I kind of ventured off and was like, well, let me do a little project management. Um, and when you're a project manager, anybody that's ever been a project manager, you know you wear multiple hats, right? It's not just your one job. <laughs> you have to know everybody else's job. And, uh, and through that, I was able to really build up my skills. And so, I, you know, I just finally reached a point where I was like, well, I've got all my skills, right? I'm energetic. I've built up a name for myself in this industry. Um, I have people, companies like coming to me, begging me uh, to work with them. So I started doing a lot of side jobs to the point where it just became a whole other job. And that's where I was able to just finally make the jump. And I retired. I actually had a retirement party and everything. <laughs> It was so much fun. And my husband gave me like th this retirement card and like all these gifts. And it was just like, ah, it just felt so free. And so there I was, I, I blew up my company very, very fast. In just a matter of months, I was overloaded, um, had to hire uh, really, really quickly. I had like 20 people, 20 staff members within the first maybe three months. Um, and I didn't really know what I was doing. I mean, I had worked for other companies for so long, so I was kind of winging it. I didn't really have any mentors like we talk about now online, right? Um, social media 
the social media wasn't as big, but but the website was big, right? Like going to the website first. And then, and then people started catching on like, wait, but how do I get traffic to my site? I just purchased all this money for a website, but I don't know how to get people there. So this was kind of like back then. And, um, and I really just um, learned as I went, you know, I'm very smart when it comes to business. I can learn very quickly. I learned from my failures very quickly as well. And I'm just kind of able to pick myself up and like run with it. And the company just blew up, you know, and it was just at the height of my success that um, out of the blue one day, I just uh, got a really devastating health crisis. And um, long story short, uh, very shortly after that, um, I my husband rushed me to the hospital one day and it was five minutes after we arrived that I flatlined in his arms. And that day just forever changed the, the, the future of both of our lives and, and literally everybody around us. Um, I think it's very easy to go through something like that and think, oh, it's me, why did this happen to me? You know, my life was like on top of the world. I can't even tell you how many people just in my life were affected I'm talking businesses were affected, like friends were affected, families were affected, my husband was affected. Like my death affected everybody's world around me. And um, and really what you're seeing now with me on social media is me recovering after you know, 90 minutes of CPR, the hospital trying to resuscitate me, no luck. Uh, being, you know, close to being pronounced uh, dead on, you know, on the spot. One man didn't give up in the, in the emergency room and had a few connections. They transferred me immediately to one of the top cardiothoracic hospitals in New York City. Went there and it was literally for three months, I was in a coma. Uh, every single day I was on the verge of, I mean, I was that close to sur you know, surviving. And um, so you can imagine what somebody like my husband had to go through for three months, not knowing all those calls from the heart surgeons, uh, you know, which, which one is gonna be the one that says, you know, sorry, she's gone, you know? Right. And uh, so, so it was, an absolute miracle. I survived that all. I am literally like a rock star in that hospital. <laughs> and, and frankly, all over the world too, because it's like close to possible that I should have survived. And um, so I am in all the medical records. Um, I During that time, I had a near-death experience. So any of those stories you hear about people crossing over and experiencing heaven, um, I've had one of those. So my story has actually been picked up by um, international media outlets, History Channel, Metro News, uh, NHK Broadcasting in Japan. They did a whole documentary film just featuring me. Um, and I've been published by the largest public, uh, the largest near-death experience research foundation in the world. Um, they want me now that I'm better to start coming to speak uh, in different places around the country. So um you know, it's crazy. It's crazy sometimes the things that make your life take off and push you to step into the greatest version of yourself. Because if I hadn't died, um, my God, my life would have just been the same, you know, as it was before I died. And uh, I, I, am, I am living my dream right now. I'm living my dream. And that came out of living the ultimate, ultimate nightmare. Um, so yeah, so it's, when I say it's an honor, Frank, to be sitting here with you live, <laughs> it's an honor. It really, really is. It Man, really is. there was no way that I could, I could even, even close to that intro. So I want you to introduce yourself. So. And, and you just said so many things there that I just want to focus in and just, you know, really shine on a little bit because, you yeah. know, if, if 
you know, thank God you're here. But if you had it, like you'd live the full life. Like you were one of the most sought after pro female programmers at a time when, you know, even to this day, most programmers are male. I mean, if you go to Silicon Valley in San Francisco, they call it Man Francisco. There's no chick. <laughs> There's none. I love it. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I'm definitely the only female in many, many departments. Um, every once in a while, there would be one, and usually from another country. So you're definitely a world-class talent, and even though you were world-class talent, you retired early. You decided to move on and start your own business, and you started your business from a place where you were already making six figures, and almost everybody, especially on social media, drops six figures like it's the end-all, be-all. I come from the real estate world, and if somebody says they make six figures, they'll get laughed out of a room. They're I like, know. what are you going to do with with six <laughs> figures? You're okay. giving a five one home? What are you going to do with that? You know, so my, my friends wouldn't even bat an eye at that, but you drop six figures on social media and everyone's like, oh my God, when's right. your Lamborghini coming in? It's like, right. you can't even make a payment on a Lamborghini with that kind of no. cash, you know? So, <laughs> I know. you know, so even though you were at that perceived success level, um, you decided to go off on your own and you very quickly scaled up because of your reputation. You obviously do great work. You had a team of 20 people. You had leveraged your previous experience in your you know, corporate life as a project manager to still manage this process, even though you had no idea what you were doing, but you still were able to figure it out as you went. You just had the courage to jump and just to experience things. And that's something that I really wanted to convey to everybody in the talent tribe and everybody who's listening to this podcast, that if you just go for it, I promise you, you put yourself in that position where you're you know, floating down the river with no boat, no paddle, you're gonna figure out how to swim, you're gonna accumulate some branches, some leaves, you're gonna tie some things together and you're gonna figure it out. You have no choice, because otherwise you're gonna go over the waterfall. And when you put people into a corner, a hundred times out of a hundred times, they might get beat up a little bit, but they always make it or they die, you know? And you almost died, you didn't die, you came back, you got had all, you're now a living legend, literally <laughs> you're a living legend all over the world. And, <laughs> and you're just going up from there. So I wanted yeah. you to really show people where you came from and yeah. kind of show, you know, highlight a little, a little bit of the things that, that, that got you to that point. But reality situation is, freaking died you were in a coma for three months all right you get up you're obviously healthy now and you're starting from scratch i mean you can't afford to pay 20 people when you're in a coma man you don't even know if you can afford to pay your hospital bills for the stuff that you have going on so you, you go through all that i'm sure there's a bunch more there but you're at ground zero you know you had and i find that almost every successful person anywhere you know has this massive success and just something happens the story isn't as good until something happens Something right. major happened to you, and now you're like, okay, yeah. what do I do from here? So walk yeah. us through that. Yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah. So basically, you know, after you know the three month coma and then life support um, took months uh, to to be even weaned off of life support. So that was something new, something that they don't show you on television, unlike <laughs> you know all those hospital shows. <laughs> right. Um, they always like unplug and like the next day they're like, oh, like walking around, like, you know, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, where's the full body rehabilitation? <laughs> right. So, um, yeah. So basically I came out, needed absolute full body rehabilitation. I was a baby all over again. Couldn't walk, couldn't feed myself, couldn't use my hands, couldn't use anything. I mean, I was 100% um, dependent on multiple people. So as you can imagine, you know, CEO, then bam, lose everything. Yeah, the company couldn't survive. And I really hadn't been around long enough or even around a mentor to even understand this process, the, the option of scaling, right? So that your company can survive a disaster like this. Right. So um, so really to, uh, to shorten the story, it, I ended up, uh, needing to come home on still on life support, but it was portable. Uh, so it was portable bionic heart. I was the bionic woman. Um, it was implanted. It is a titanium pump and it sat right uh, at the top of my stomach and it was big. It was cumbersome. It also had external parts. So I actually carried a backpack of medical equipment. I was literally attached to a chain that weighed about four 
limited amount of time, I didn't know I didn't know how long I would be on it. I didn't know my fate. Didn't know my fate. Um, and so what ended up happening was I had to learn to let, make the best of every day because I didn't know my fate. Um, and that's how I lived for about five years. I just made the best of being in pain every day of this 10 pound bag that never left my side. Um, it had to do everything with me. So if I finally felt well enough to do a little bit of like chair yoga, I was the one in the room doing chair yoga with a big freaking bag <laughs> that weighed 10 pounds glued to me, right? So um, I had to get very creative. It was either that or sit uh, sit around bawling my eyes out, you know? So I did that um, for about five years. And then uh, up to last year, um, actually October, 2014, I finally was listed and received the, the gift of a donated heart. Um, I had complications during that. So it ended up taking me another six months to recover from that. But being the warrior, crazy warrior that I am, I have a problem like sitting still very long. So I had to go through full body rehabilitation all over again. Came home as a baby in a wheelchair, couldn't walk, couldn't feed myself. But to pass the time, I actually wrote my first number one best-selling book while I was in bed with one finger all with my iPhone. Nice. So that's, how I, that's how I became a number one Amazon best-selling author. Um, that is also when I Periscope launched. And Periscope for me solved the one biggest problem I had, which was I just got out of surviving a death tragedy, near death tragedy. Then I had to go in the hospital again for a heart transplant, full body rehabilitation again. Now you mentioned, you know, money and cost for healthcare. You know, the first bill from when I died was $3 million. Whoa. Three million. So tie on and now a heart transplant, you know, I don't even, I, at this point now, I'm like, <laughs> you know, and so I really, what I did was um, I struggled. I came home. I was like, my God, did I make a, dis a mistake getting the new heart? It didn't feel well. You know, it didn't, it felt weird when I first got the heart transplant because it had, it needs time to adjust to you. And then also I just, I was disabled again. So here I was, like I was on this life support that was cumbersome, but I was kind of walking again. And then bam, I get the heart transplant. And I'm supposed to be out like this new brand new life. And I end up with complications and I'm right back into full body rehabilitation. So you can just picture the mindset and the strength I had to have to not let that get me down. Like, it was so, like when people say now, like, how are you so freaking strong? I'm like, you have no idea what I've been through. <laughs> if I can survive death, I can do anything online. <laughs> like, right. you know, and that's kind of how I look at it. And, um, and so really it was Periscope. I, I, it was the one thing I could do from my bed, staring out at the, uh, out my window, out at the people walking around and here I am sitting in a wheelchair, helpless, and I can't leave my house for months. What was I going to do? How was I going to make money? I got bills, millions to the hospital. What was I going to do? And this app launched named Periscope, and I literally was just like, I'm terrified of the camera. I'm, I'm terrible on a camera. I'm shy. And but this is my only option. And it, I had to get on trembling, pouring of sweat. My first scope, I don't, I don't know, think I said anything. I mean, I didn't, what was I supposed to talk about, right? I'm in pain, I'm struggling, right? But I stuck with it. I stuck with it and I never gave up. And that's when I came across my mentor, Grant Cardone, uh, New York Times number one, uh, best-selling author of the 10x rule sell or be sold if you're not first you're last and he changed the game for me he absolutely changed the game for me and it was through hanging out with him that I understood I had one mission in order to even think 
about starting a new business with all these limitations. I had one option, and that was just to bust out of obscurity, which is what I teach. It was just to get massive amounts of attention, even if I had no job, even if I had no company, even if I had no mission, even if I didn't know have a product and didn't even know what the heck I had to offer. I knew I had one mission, which was to get attention by any means necessary. And I stared my fears point blank in the face. And I said, you have one mission. And I just went for it. And I did whatever I needed to do to connect with thousands, literally thousands around the world and to let people know I exist. That's it. It was as simple as that. And in that process, I was able to gain this massive following of thousands of people all over the world. And then it dawned on me, my branding background. I was so used to branding major companies like Fortune 500 companies and their products that I was like, wait a second, what if I applied that to create a brand for myself? And I literally just took my branding experience for mega, mega, multi-million uh, multi dollar products and I applied it as me being the product and then I took Grant Cardone's piece of advice which was to just burn my name into your minds and that's what I did. And in under 12 months, I literally, everybody knows my name. Everybody calls me Tiger Mama. Even if you don't know me, you've heard of me, right? And out of that platform, I was then able to figure out how I could solve people's problems. Because I'd gotten to know, I built those relationships with so many people that I was able to figure out, well, how can I help you? That was the one thing I always ask people, how can I help you? What can I do to support you? And because I asked that for so many months, because I gave my heart and I loved so hard to so many people all over the world, they told me what they needed from me. And out of that, I created a business. And in under three months, I was able to come into my first six figures. And it's really funny, Frank, because when I first came on, I literally said, I'm terrified of being on camera. I'm terrified of the camera. I don't know what I'm doing on here. I don't have much to offer to you other than just my love and my heart, my new heart, my new beating heart in my chest. And I said, but somehow I'm going to rebuild my six figure business. I'm going to do it. I'm going to share it with you publicly. I'm going to allow you to watch me. I'm going to allow you to join me in the process as I do it. I will share everything openly and authentically. Every single step I will do, I will take you with me. And I will rebuild it because I built it once and I can do it again. And Frank, this year, I'm on my way to making 500000 by the end of my first year in business. And this is the power of just going all in. And just being connected and, and, and believing in yourself, even when you don't know what to do. I mean, there's just, there's so much power in it. I can't even express. Um, anybody can do this. This is, I am not superwoman. I am absolutely not superwoman. People call me that all the time. And um, I am not superwoman at all. Anybody, anybody, anybody can do this and I believe in them 100%. You said so much in there. First off, you're the $3 million woman, first off. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, I love it. I, I've, I've seen like just recently in the last six months or so, there was a gentleman who's like a bodybuilder actually and he has an artificial heart as well and he's got the little bag where- Oh really? Yeah, where he did that. So like I have a visual picture of it and to see you now, and to just imagine that, like I didn't know you up until maybe about four or five months ago because our relationship is fairly new.
but yeah but you know you recently had this and you obviously have overcame so much of that um yeah one thing i want to i want to focus on is you wrote a best-selling book with one yeah. finger on your <laughs> iphone and there's people who are full body able and well they have all the time in the world like at that time you probably couldn't run off of six hours of sleep um at that time you probably couldn't do four hours of sleep you probably slept maybe half a day or more because of all the medications and you know rehab that you're putting on your body and you yeah. still were able to, to carve out that time during your rehab during surviving to yeah. go to that next level and to put yourself out there so i've got to commend you on that but also to highlight that because there's so many people who do have six figure jobs, five figure jobs. Maybe they don't have a job and they're going to school and mommy and daddy's paying for their meals or maybe they're on welfare. You didn't have any of that. You had one finger and an iPhone and yeah. you were just adamant and you were like, this is where I'm at right now. But you know, and what I love about Tiger Mama is that she's always just put herself in a, like a tiger, like a tiger doesn't ever not eat. A tiger's always looking for its next meal. Tiger is always in the hunt. And that's what you did. You were like, I may be limited in this way, but what are my options? How can I uh, elevate myself? How can I exalt myself? Because no one's going to do it for me. No one came down there and says, hey, you should take your finger and go here and here. You have to force yourself. And I can imagine it being very painful, very strenuous. I can just imagine the stuff that you're going through just at that moment in time. So I really wanted to focus and commend you on that, but also share that with the uh, people that are listening to this podcast because – you, you have so much power in you. And if somebody can do that with just one finger and a few hours a day, you can do anything. You can do absolutely anything. And at that time, you said you had faced your fears and you were in a wheelchair. And there's so many people who are like, before they go on Periscope or live stream, they got to get their hair and their makeup and their lights, myself included. You know, before I go on Periscope, I get my lights ready. I, you know, I get my nice shirts on. Before we do this interview, I had to like on the cool slide on my watch. So I feel like super cool super right. you know super legit and yeah. he just did it and i can actually personally resonate with that because in october of 2015 when i first got started in my uh in my uh social media career i had so much business coming in from all over the world because you and i both know and have directly felt the power of getting a global audience through social media specifically on live stream and specifically through periscope that i didn't sleep for three days i didn't drink water or eat for three days because i was literally on back-to-back -back phone calls from right. you know whale clients all over the world who needed my services and yeah. i literally just fell over and was like this close to dying so i called up the ambulance uh oh i'm in the back God. i'm in the back of the pair actually i was doing an interview with a uh, wwe diva and she was like frank you have to go you look like you're about to die you're looking blue in the face so i was like you know what you're right so I called up the ambulance and I, uh, I'm in the back of the ambulance and the guy's like, yo, this guy's about to die. What the hell have you been doing? And I was like, I've been in my room interviewing people and taking phone calls. He's like, are you serious? <laughs> and, and I was telling him about Periscope and how it was really cool. He's like, bro, you're about to die. You need to relax. Periscope. Are you hallucinating right now, sir? And so I, like, no. so I pulled out my, my phone and I started periscoping from the back of the ambulance. Oh my and gosh. I'm like, you know, just, I don't even know what I was saying. Thank God there was, there was no recordings of it because it's probably pretty embarrassing. But I can tell you why there was like thousands of people. Like, why is this guy in the back of the ambulance? And I had built up a, not a huge following, but a decent one. They were like, oh my God. And then it was like the drama thing. Then I was in the yeah. hospital for a week. I had a tube up my nose and I was still broadcasting every day because I was committed to my business. And I was like, look, I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys that I'm committed to my business. And part of my rehab, I'm nowhere near the rehab where you were at, but part of my rehab was to walk around a little bit, you know, had the little IV in my arm, poor me, my best friend was with me. And, uh, you know, I was surrounded by a bunch of cute nurses from the university of Texas. So I would go on Periscope and I would like flirt with these girls and be like, What's up, girls? You know, I look a little different when I don't got this thing in my nose, you know, when I've got a little, an extra 20 pounds on me. And they're, like, loving it. And people on Periscope were just cracking up. And I turned a negative, and I turned it into a positive. Yeah. People were like, uh, people were like, oh, my God. It's a, it's a, just a, just a fun place to be. And yeah. the, the reason I share that story with you guys is you have to make any situation that you're in into a positive. Every single yeah. one, because I could have just laid there for a week. I could have just been like, poor me. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. And you just got to make a positive out of that. So yeah. going back to what you had, what you had shared, you yeah. had leveraged your skills from 
million dollar corporations, multi-million dollar corporations in branding. And you apply that to yourself. So you took training. So lots of people right now have jobs and like, I don't know where to start. You have a company that has unlimited resources right now or more resources than you have. And they're allowing you to access that for free. And you can take those trainings, those seminars. You can even go to your floor and say, hey, there's a conference from Tiger Mama and the talented Mr. Salas. And they're going to teach me to do this, this, and this. And you realistically in the realm of possibilities could convince them to mm -hmm. pay for your training with people like us and they'll put the bill to build your skills up if you can prove that you're going to make their bottom line better so yeah. you're just not being resourceful enough if you're if you're in that place and that's okay but our job is to make you aware of that so um tiger mama tell people you know what you do now like how did you get to six figures in three months how did you get to you know projected to close half a million dollars in sales this year <laughs> what do you do <laughs> Great question. <laughs> I get that asked so much because it looks like I just have so much fun online. It's hilarious. I'm like, you can't tell what I do. They're like, no, you just have so much fun. <laughs> so yeah, so right now, um, I actually, a couple months ago, I launched um, my, uh, I have a branding and, and leadership academy. So it's called Busting Out of Obscurity Leadership and Branding Academy. Um, it's full of uh, different types of courses. So one's a course, a 90 day course of just busting you out of obscurity. So it's a 12 week uh, boot camp where I literally take you through the steps that I took on using, you know, live streaming um, and social media. I take you through the exact steps and the training that I did um, right after my heart transplant um, up until my, my, my six figure, uh, the first six figure, you know, income. And, um, and I really, I started off just with that, what that one little course and, um, and it just was such a hit. It sold out. I basically launched it right on Periscope. Um, and you know, this is what I teach. I teach about how to build a tribe, right? So a lot of that had to do with everything that I did to build a tribe, to, to create the brand. Right. So the first real big step that I teach is you've got to create your brand. Right. You know, it, it's going to become a business once you get that income coming in. Right. Once you get the income flow, then it's a business. Right. But you can just start with a brand. Right. It doesn't need to be making money at first in order for you to say this is my brand. Right. And so I really walk people through how to start, how to create a brand. Um, and all the steps that I used pretty much to build a raving tribe that literally was begging me, Frank. They were begging me. I had been on so long that they wanted more of me. And so I teach people how that even happened. How do you get thousands and thousands of people to be begging you for them to be like, take my credit card, right? Like there's a problem to that that doesn't happen the first day you say i'm building a brand you know and then like where's the money it doesn't happen because i get a lot of people being like they try for like a week and they're like where's the money <laughs> like nobody knows who you are yet right i took the time to give 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 of myself right and so i walk them through that whole um process um so again this is one of one of the courses in the academy um, but I walked them through the process, how to create a brand, uh, how to build your tribe, um, how to how to find out who your target market is, right? A lot of people try to sell online to just anybody, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work, right? You got to know who you're selling to. So there's a whole art behind that. And again, this came from my years of experience in branding. So it was natural for me. I didn't have to stop and do all these stages. It just kind of flows out of me because I've been in branding for 16 years. I breathe it, right? I mean, you breathe it, right? You know, I can tell, like we just breathe it, right? And if you don't understand branding, you have to learn, right? You've got to be around it. You've got to learn, you've got to train with a mentor. Um, the other thing I really help people do is once you figure out who your, um, your, your market is, then I help you get your tribe so that they're literally begging you for a product. And that's what I did. So I launched it to them. And 
Frank, it just sold out within hours. It just completely sold out, right? I'm only one person. I hadn't scaled yet, so I was one person. It sold out. Um, and I think within the first 60 days, um, I had my first 50,000. Um, and then I think I launched the program a second time and, you know, came into the full uh, first six figures. Um, so, you know, 100K. Um, and then since then, I've just repackaged everything into not just teaching branding and busting out of obscurity, but also leadership. Because a lot of people, uh, you know, they look at me as a motivational speaker, right? So there's a lot of elements into that. Um, so that's probably a lot of more what you see me doing live with people. It's really sitting down and really helping people work through their blocks, their obstacles. How do you keep going? How do you survive the unimaginable, like death, right? Or some type of tragedy, you know, or something like what happened with you, like a, like a burnout overnight, you find yourself in the hospital. These are things that just happen in life along the way. So how do you recover from them and bounce back stronger? Uh, so that's, th this is like, my academy is just everything that I have to offer the world under one roof and one powerful family and frank my goal is to get 1000 members literally 1000 members um trying to think what year i put <laughs> at first i was like 2017 and then i was like maybe i should write 2018 but um let's just say between 2017 and 2018 i want 1000 awesome heart centered uh entrepreneurs that are emerging leaders that want to make a massive massive impact around the world. I want them a part of my family. I want to help teach them. I want to help them grow. I want to help them step into leadership with a powerful brand platform. Um, so that's everything that I teach uh, online. I do a lot of live streaming still. I've kind of moved off of Periscope uh, and more onto Facebook, um, only because I think that's allowing me to reach more people overall. Um, but the, the core of everything that I teach is, is branding, busting out of obscurity, and really stepping into that leadership because I am all about entrepreneurs that want to connect together from all over the world and create something massive and really together create a massive impact on the world. Like leaving egos behind, I want to find those people that want to connect for the greater good. This is not just about money for me. This is about coming back from death, understanding how powerful I am and how powerful you are, and joining forces together to actually do what we're meant to, to do here, you know, on this planet. So um, that's that's a little bit of what I do. <laughs> that's amazing. I, I want to I focus in on some things that you said. So, so I, I'm all about tribe. You always hear me talk about the talent tribe. You always hear me yeah. talk about how uh, everybody should have their own tribe. And you launched your initial program to your tribe and you generated substantial revenue very quickly. Now, I've done the same thing and I also teach people to do the same thing. And the best form, the best, the best practice in this mm -hmm. business is to offer your new services and products to your tribe first. We were even talking about this. I'm offering something to people like yourself and other influencers. I was like, hey, I'm going to be launching this. It's not ready yet. There's going to be some bugs. Just let you know up front, and I'm going to give you the best rate. I'm going to give it to you first. And because of our relationship, we can now leverage that, and you can give me amazing feedback that I can take in the most positive light because I know it's coming from the most positive place. And when I'm ready to launch the actual marketplace, with the full professional product, now my product is more potent. Now yes. my product is going to affect more people at a higher level. And you can't build those kinds of relationships unless you have a tribe. You can't build those world-class products unless you have a tribe. So one of my platforms called the Talent School, which you guys should be mentioned here on the show several times, is uh, was first launched to my tribe. And I launched it and I did it. In one day, in 24 hours, I had an open enrollment, and I had over 150 people sign up, um, and we generated six figures in one day. Now, I, yes. everyone hears me say one day, but this was after like eight months of every single day showing up, constantly providing value to the marketplace, like you had said, maybe yeah. picking up a few consulting clients here and there to sustain the business. But my first initial product launch 
was done after I had established a, a tribe. And at that time, my tribe was maybe about like six or 700 people strong. And now it's a little over about 1,100 or so. Nice. So we're still, we're still both very new. And something that you also said is that your goal is to have a 1,000 members in your heart center tribe, which is telling everybody that you don't even have a 1,000 people in your tribe and you're making these numbers. And so people yeah. think, I, I need a million followers. I need <laughs> 10 million this. And oh, my God, blah, blah, blah. Guys, you maybe need like literally 20 to 30 qualified people to replace whatever income you're getting now or to keep you at a very humble, very modest income as you build your business or 10 whales, you know, one or the other to get to that yeah. point and then just scale totally. from that and grow from that. You don't need a million people. So, yeah. and finally, the last thing that you said is you're looking to collab. Like right now we're collabing. It's all yeah. about collaboration. It's all about reaching out to people. And the way that I was able to get my business out there is I like to go to different tribe leaders. Like right now, uh, Tiger Mom is coming up to me in the talent tribe because I'm the tribe leader of the talent tribe and she's helping me serve the tribe. And then I'm going to be on her show to help her serve her tribe. And yeah. that's what it's all about because she's going to pick up followers from my tribe. I'm going to pick up followers from her tribe. And we're going to go and do that with a bunch of different people. And who knows, in a year or so from now, when I have my next retreat or my next conference, maybe Tiger Mama is going to be a keynote. And she's selling her tickets. I'm selling my tickets. <laughs> we're, it's a revenue generating opportunity for all of us. And that's yeah. how you play the game. You can only go so far by yourself. Tiger Mama is amazing. I'm amazing. We both know that. But together, I have a saying. You can always beat swag, but you can never beat swag on swag. It is physically impossible to yeah. beat swag on swag. So you got to surround yourself with other people who got the same swag, but ideally more swag than you do so they can lift you up. You always yeah. should be reaching up, and you can learn from so many different people. So uh, that's, our, that's our time for the show today. If somebody wanted to reach out to Tiger Mama and be part of your inner circle to, to work with <laughs> you, to, to just link up with you, where do they go? Yeah. The best place right now uh, to join me, and it's free, um, is to really just find my vibe, uh, Live Big, Be Happy, on Facebook. So if you go to um, hashtag Live Big, Be Happy, if you type that in to, um, into the search in Facebook, it'll bring it right up. Um, and, uh, you know, and I will add you in. Um, so we have about right now we have about 650 people in there and it's just, it's grown. I mean, so quickly. Um, I only launched it a few months ago, so it's already kind of taking, you know, it kind of reaches that point where all of a sudden it starts taking off really fast. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's kind of where we hang out. And I actually get free training in there every single day on how to step into leadership. So. Um, that's the best place, um, you know, no opt-in. You can just go there. Um, let me know that you found me uh, here that, you know, through my buddy Frank. And I will absolutely take good care of you. Um, anybody that knows Frank, I, I will absolutely uh, take care of. So, um, but that's the best place. And, you know, like I said, it's free training every single day with me. I'm in there all the time, just like Frank is with his group. So, um, I am very big on engaging online, so you will definitely find me there. And if you want to learn more about my programs, um, you can always ask me in the group. So that's the easiest thing. So thank you, Frank. This was so much fun. <laughs> Tiger Mama, you are not off the hook. I cannot have you on the show and not ask you one question. Okay. What, what is the afterlife like? Just like a <laughs> and like, what is that like? Just walk this us through that so experience. Awesome. Yeah, just a little tiny question. We'll slip it in there. A little tiny question, right? A little two-second two second question. Um, I will say it was beautiful. It was peaceful. It was absolutely, it was so incredible that I didn't want to come back. That's how, that's how amazing it was. I didn't want to come back. Wow. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm Thank glad you. you're bringing all of that beautiful energy from wherever you went and put it <laughs> all over the world. And I'm just blessed to have you in my circle. I'm blessed to be in yours. Yeah. And I look forward to helping you serve your tribe. Thank you so much, Tiger Mama. Thank you, Frank. I really enjoy this. I appreciate you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.